Hi, or welcome to your 14-day weather forecast. Here's a picture I took of my garden pond last week and one I took earlier today. There has been a big change in the weather. It's turned a good deal more unsettled with significant amounts of rain falling in most parts of the UK. But will that continue to be the case as we head through the first half of September? Well, let's see. Now, this is a picture at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 2nd. There's a nasty looking feature just for southwest. And as I run the sequence, what we see is that quickly moves eastwards. It brings heavy outbreaks of rain and strong winds to much of the UK. In the following days, it's mixed to begin with, but then a change starts to take place. High pressure builds and it starts blocking the flow of weather systems from the Atlantic. So it's going to be turning drier, at least for time, and particularly in the east. The other thing to note, of course, is that the winds are going into a southerly direction. So it looks like we're going to be pulling up some much warmer air. Running this through to conclusion, what happens is the Atlantic starts to return, that warm air and high pressure get pushed away eastwards, and it's quite a mixed finish to the week. A risk of showers or long spells of rain returning to all areas. A lot's taking place. Now, this is the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence. The UK, of course, inside the red circle, hidden there under the mottled shaded area, which is the track of the jet. The oranges indicate the warm air aloft, the greens fairly close to average, and the blues are cold air. As I run the sequence, what we see is that uh, low pressure stays close to the UK initially. Jet stream also close by, but then it's a more mixed picture. We do pull up some warmer air for a time, as I've mentioned. But by the end of the week, the Atlantic is back, at least according to this computer model run. So what does all that mean in terms of the actual day-to-day -day weather conditions? Let's have a quick look. Here's a view on a Wednesday, the 3rd of September. Temperatures around 20 or 21 in central and eastern counties of England, cooler as you head into Northern Ireland and Scotland, 13 to 15. But I think it's the rain, which is the main story here. We've got heavy outbreaks of rain pushing up from the southwest across much of the UK through the course of the day, showery conditions following in behind them. As well as wet, it's going to be windy. And I think it could be quite notable in the south because of the time of year, it's still early September. This is showing forecast gusts through Wednesday, and you can see 40 miles an hour in much of southern and central Britain, maybe 50 miles an hour in exposed coastal counties. So with the trees fully dressed still, there is a possibility for some disruption due to the heavy rain and strong winds. Moving forwards to Thursday, it's showery. Temperatures not too far from the average, 21, 22, maybe in central and eastern England once more. They are lower as you head northwards and westwards. By Friday, drier conditions. Temperatures may be just nudging up a fraction, but there isn't much in it. There's some nasty looking outbreaks of rain just off to the northwest. And I think that sets the theme to an extent through this period. There's a greater chance of it staying quite mixed in the northwest of the UK, whilst drier conditions become more likely, at least for time, in other areas. You can see the picture on Saturday, some spells of rain there in the far northwest, but for much of the UK, according to this at least, it's dry. There are a few showers dotted around. Also, it's now somewhat warmer, 23 to 25 Celsius there in central and eastern counties. It's still cooler as you head into Northern Ireland and Scotland, but even there, temperatures have ticked up a little bit. The following two days, Sunday and Monday, this has showery rain on Sunday, mostly dry on Monday. The details, of course, at this range very much up for grabs, but it just gives a flavour of how things could develop. Temperatures there in the south on these two charts, 23 to 24 degrees, several degrees lower in the north, so quite warm. But some computer models have shown those values going a little bit higher. For example, the Canadian model, 26 degrees there in central and eastern counties on Sunday. It is cooler in the northwest, but even there in parts of northern Scotland up to 20 or 21. So uncertainty about just how much temperatures are going to climb, how long those warmer conditions will last, but the signal for it to happen, at least for a time, is quite strong. And that's reflected on the Morgrex G chart for London, showing temperatures. You can see something of an upwards trend there from around the 5th and the 6th. 
them quite a big spread in the days which follow. And I think that's probably just indicating some uncertainty about how quickly that warmer air is going to be shunted away eastwards. Now, here's the rainfall graph from Morgrep Street for London. Quite a lot in the short term. I've already discussed that nasty looking disturbance moving across the UK on Wednesday and then showery conditions following, but a signal for it to be drier between the, sixth and the, the 5th and the 7th before the number of rain spikes starts to rise once more, suggesting that changeable conditions are returning. And this is the view for Carlisle. Wet in the short term, then some indications of it being drier there as well between the 5th and the 7th, although there are still one or two rain spikes showing up, but most runs are bringing in dry conditions even here before it turns more unsettled beyond that. The rainfall aggregates for the first five days, these are generated using the ECM and GFS models. ECM showing quite significant rain in all parts of the UK, much of it associated with that area of low pressure on Wednesday into Thursday. GFS on the right there, a little bit drier in central and eastern parts of England especially, but still rain in all areas. And I think it's probably just worth noting that the charts I showed last week for this period maybe actually underestimated the amount of rain. The, the tendency for them is often to overestimate in my experience, but I think last week they, they undershot rain totals, which is probably less common. Moving forward to the 10-day charts, the yellows and oranges now appearing in the west of the UK. So rain totals stacking up significantly, some very wet conditions possible if these are right in the west, so the Atlantic coming back. ECM on the left there has higher totals from the GFS on the right in central and eastern counties, indicating that the high pressure over continental Europe is probably going to be further away from the GFS has it. All in all though, the, the message is, through the day five to day 10 part of the forecast period, that rain is most likely in, the, likely in the west, but the Atlantic is going to be ascendant once more. In more general terms, do the deterministic models support that view? Here's the GFS on Tuesday the 9th of September. Low pressure here, high pressure to the east. And there is a possibility with this type of pattern that disturbances moving in from the Atlantic could become slow moving with that high pressure just to our east. If that does happen, then there could indeed be some very high rain totals where those disturbances start to become stationary. So probably in the west, it is something worth keeping an eye on. Here's the Canadian model, low pressure there, high pressure to the northeast. The German icon, a flatter flow here from the Atlantic, high pressure to the north. The European ECM model, low pressure there, high pressure to the east. The artificial intelligence version looks a little bit diluted, but generally showing a similar pattern. And finally, the UK Met Office Global, quite nasty with this area of low pressure, I think just centered to the southwest and unsettled conditions moving across all areas. So taking those together, the message is that after that drier and warmer period, particularly in the east, it will be turning more unsettled as we head towards the end of the first week for chance of showers or longer spells of rain increases in all areas. And there are some indications from these charts that those heavier spells of rain could well be thundery at times, maybe on Wednesday and then perhaps once more towards the end of the week. How do things develop as we head through the second week? Well, of course, it is just about the general trends and probabilities of this range using the ensemble data. Here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Across the top, upper air temperatures, and they are close to or slightly above the average, or at least that's what the ensemble mean shows, a thick purple line. It's just a little bit above the thick black line, the 30-year average for much of the time. Possibly it is being pulled up a little, particularly later on by some of the runs which are going for significantly warmer air, and they, they are not in a minor, they are not in a majority, sorry. So I think I think the message really through here is that upper air temperatures are probably going to be close to the average for much of the time. That's a most likely scenario, maybe just a little bit above as I've indicated. The risk of rain, well, quite a few spikes early on after that drier interlude in the first week. It's turned more and settled by the end, and that's continued to be the case for the first few days here. But perhaps the risk of rain is reducing through the second half of the second week. 
the two metre temperatures, so the ones we actually experience, the maximums for the days across the top of the overnight lows and the bottom part here. Lots of the orange colour, 16 to 20, 21 to 25, still significant in these columns. So the possibility of some warm days, it's obviously going to be dependent upon the sunshine and when we've got the cloud, the showers and the rain, those temperatures are going to be at the lower end of the forecast range. But when we get the drier and brighter spells, it could warm up quite nicely. The overnight lows, mostly between 11 and 15, still precious little green appearing on these graphs on these data tables for the overnight values in the southeast at least. Manchester, a similar trend, albeit at a slightly lower level. The, the, the anomaly here isn't at all distinct. It's the, the ensemble mean is staying close to that thick black line, so it does dip a little bit below it for a short time, then it rises up towards the end, but all in all close to average. Still a few significantly warmer runs making it into the ensemble plot this far north in the UK, but all in all, close to average. The risk of rain is ongoing, lots of spikes early on, perhaps their numbers decreasing for a time before ticking up towards the end. It's also, of course, autumn, the meteorological autumn, which means we can expect stronger winds, and in the short term that's going to be the case, as I've already discussed, and it's probably going to be the case through the second week. These are the forecast gusts for Manchester between the 8th and the 12th of September. The gust forecasts actually in the ensemble don't go out quite as far as some of the other parameters, so it's not the full second week which is being shown here. All in all though, windy conditions are possible, but there's nothing too concerning showing up just yet. Two meter temperature data tables for Manchester. The orange is dominate, the 16s to 20s, a little bit of a higher category, the 21 to 25, and some of the low ones, 11 to 15. Nighttime lows, mostly in the yellow bucket as well, but there is more green here, 6 to 10, than on the London chart, which was almost void of green. I think there were just one, two runs at the very end, which were going into this category. Up to Glasgow, if anything now, the anomalies dipped, Below the 30 year average, you can see the ensemble mean there, staying below the thick black line for much of the second week. And it's looking wet. So I suspect there could well be some very high rain totals in the northwest of the UK, possibly the west as well, as I've mentioned, but particularly the northwest. Here are the two meter temperatures for Glasgow lower than Manchester and London through the days, 11 to 15, dominating through the nights, 6 to 10. Rainfall in more general terms for the second week, using the ECM ensemble probability data. The charts here show the percentage chance of five or more millimetres of rain falling on the first three days. The orange and red shading there in the west and the northwest is where the risk is the highest. It's between 60 and 80 percent. Significantly lower as you head eastwards into even into eastern Scotland and eastern England as well. The next three days, the oranges and reds start to become a little bit more washed out as the number of solutions in the ensemble increases, there's more scatter here, but the broad pattern remains the same. The weather's going to be coming in from the west. The wettest conditions are likely to be in the northwest, the driest in eastern England and southeastern England. Does the mean surface level pressure data table for York give some clues as to what could be happening? Through the first few days, Lots of green in these columns, those are runs which are dominated by low pressure. A fair amount of yellow, most of those are close to or a little bit above the average pressure. Some are below it, but most slightly above it. And as we head through the second week, the amount of yellow actually increases. Some orange returns as well, that's used to indicate runs which are strongly high pressure dominated. So. Some suggestions from this at least that the chance of drier periods could well be increasing through the middle and second part of the second week. The GEFS snapshot pressure chart for Friday the 12th of September has high pressure to the south or southwest, low pressure close to Ireland and an Atlantic flow across the UK. Textbook stuff. It's a similar story with the European 
um, ensemble as well. Maybe high pressure a little bit weaker, closer to the Azores, the Atlantic pushing across the United Kingdom. So, to summarise, week one, unsettled early on with heavy and potentially thundery outbreaks of rain, also windy at times. It then turns drier, especially in the east, and a good deal warmer. But in the northwest, it probably remains more mixed, and towards the end of the week, those mixed conditions start returning southwards and eastwards. Week two, changeable, therefore further outbreaks of rain are expected in all regions, but it could be potentially very wet at times in the west and the northwest. Dry and warm periods are more likely later on, especially in the east. Well, there we have it. I think on the whole, a fairly typical bag of early autumnal weather. Unsettled for much of a period, so showers are long spells of rain, but that warmer and drier spell sandwiched in between the unsettled conditions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And as ever, if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already, because in that way, you'll not be missing any of my future updates. Also, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye. <laughs>